Good evening. <coughs> Good evening. Praise God. I'm so grateful to God that I'm here again by the grace of God today. May the name of our God be praised. That's pleased the Lord again to bring us here. Lord, we thank you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We appreciate you. Thank you, Lord, for being a faithful God. Thank you, Lord. Since a few days ago that this podcast started, and I pray that, God, I don't want to stop. I don't want it to... I don't want it to stop. I want to continue. I thank you because you answered us prayers and I've been seeing your hand. <coughs> Even sometimes when it looks like, ah, oh, God, I need more grace to come. I see that you always answered us prayer. Almighty Father, I will return all the glory to you. I want to thank you also for the power of God that has been going out with these messages. They are not my words. They are your words. Thank you, Lord. You have been using them to the glory of your name. You have been breaking chains. You have been doing what only you can do. Father, I return all glory to your name. Father, we are here again, humbly, to listen to you, to learn from you. We are not of our home. We want to learn from you. In this world where things are so uh, opposite, we can call it opposite. The, the bad things, they are almost making it look like the good. And the good things are making it look like the taboo, the things that one should not be doing. But your word will always stand. Your word transcends generations. The same way you had in the past, the same instructions you had in the past, is still the same you continue to have to today. But because of the world we are in, we always need to search for the truth of the word of God. Because that is that is the, the one of the qualities of the end time. You said the truth in the world of God will be so scarce. People will not want to to hear the truth. People will run from the truth. But so you have you have given us this channel or this this means of communicating to remind ourselves of the truth in the word of God. Even though it's scarce in the world but at least this is a channel where we can listen to the truth. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because you don't allow me to speak words of my own. Every time I always see myself not being in my in my real self anymore. Lord, and I'm grateful for this. And I'm praying for more of this your power, more of this grace. Tonight again we want to learn from you. Because as as you are Speaking through me, you are also speaking to me. Father, please, we want to learn from you. In this world, where sin is, is rampant, where uh, godliness is looking like, like a wrong thing, Father, we want to stand for you. We want to stand with you. We want to do your will. Father, come and help us. Open our understanding. Let the power of God flow through this world. Because I know... When the word of God goes out, it comes with the power of God. And that same power of God is what helps us to do the will of God, even when it's difficult. Father, we ask for this more power of God tonight. Please take all the glory. Father, I commit the hearts of everyone that will listen to this into your hands. Father, Lord, let it meet them at the rightful place where they will surrender to you in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, please fill me up. Don't let me speak words of my own. Put your words in my mouth. Don't make me a useless vessel. Make me a useful vessel unto honor in the name of Jesus. Cleanse me in and out. Oh, Lord, in the name of Jesus. 
Let your word in my heart continue to move us with fire. Take all the glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that prayer was kind of long. <laughs> it was kind of long. I wanted to be sure all dots are dotted. All T's are crossed. <laughs> so that's why I had to pray that long. And it's actually a prayer from my heart. We thank God for the answer prayers. May God's name be praised in Jesus' name. Yes, today's topic was also one of the topics God gave me during my fasting. And it is firstborns. As far as I wanted to say the firstborn, but I now remember that when I'm saying the firstborn, it will look as if I'm talking about one specific person. So I now change it to firstborns. Firstborns. <laughs> How does it sound in my ear like this? The firstborns. <laughs> okay, let's just say firstborns. Firstborns. Please just take it out however it sounds. You know what I mean. Like the first child, the first baby that opens the womb. You know? Um, what was happening when God gave me this topic? I think I should be listening to something or watching something or maybe praying. And God reminded me, or maybe I was talking with my younger ones, I can't even remember, or maybe I was trying to reflect on what I said with my younger ones, and God reminded me, and God put it on my mind that firstborns are very important. I can't, I can't really remember what was happening, or what actually happened that God gave me the topic. But, you know, God was trying to tell me how powerful a first child is. You understand? And God was also telling me that his eyes is always on the first child. You know? And uh, and God reminded me also from the Bible that God already told the Israelites that the first one have mine. They should be mine. You understand? Like, maybe what God was even meaning to say when he said the firstborn am I maybe they are supposed to be pastors and ministers that from morning to night they will be in the presence of God something like that like what the Levites eventually were doing in the time of Moses or let me say in Israel that the Levites were the ones that are serving the Lord in the House of God, that they don't bother to go to the farm or do any kind of job except the service of God. I think that was what God wanted for the firstborns in the time of the law. And um, God meant it, you know. And we can also see it when. Jacob was describing his first child, his firstborn, Reuben. He said, "You are the, you are my strength. Yeah, ah, let me say it in Yoruba. It's Tayola. Epileshe Agbarami. Like, okay, it's Tayola. That is excellence in wealth, something like that. Like." Go and look at every every child that they give birth to first in a family. Go and look at the joy in that family when they give birth to that child. Go and look at all the attention they give to that child. That is what firstborn means. Like, that is the strength. You are the one that shows to the world that I'm not barren. You are the one that first shows to the world that I can be a father. I can be a mother, you know. You open the womb, you you changed my name. So they kind of give all the full attention to that first child. And in the in the continuation, this child is 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 dedicated to God and then he is expected 
to be able to bring his younger ones up. You know, I can't even remember, but I'm trying to remember now. I think one thing God told me was that firstborn are supposed not to be messing around. You are supposed to be a part that your younger ones can walk in your steps. Being a firstborn is is not easy. <laughs> it's a very hard task because a lot of people are looking up to you. I remember when I was still very, very, like when I was still in that state where I was, I was like, ah, oh God, how does it look like everyone, everyone is forsaking me, like uh, nobody, nobody is talking to me. Then one day, I now had a dream, <laughs> I now had a dream that like, small breeze has blown on me, like I had little comfort and a lot of people were now coming to me i was like ha, yeah all these people when i was going through all these things and now that i have small comfort you're now running after me ah, ah. you know i wanted to vex in the dream i woke up you know those type of dreams that something will just be happening small and then you wake up you don't know what really happened later then you now wake up now like ah, ah. why is it that when i was suffering everybody left me but when I have comfort, everybody wants to run after me. That is what firstborn is. They want you to carry the body in the load. When you finish solving it, come back, they will serve you. You understand? You know, I remember when I was in my 20s, I used to be, like, when people say they want to serve me, like, they want to be my um, workers or something, like, we are going to be doing something for you. I would be like, ah, why now? Everybody should be able to do things for themselves now. But now that I'm more mature, I understand that the Lord intentionally allows some people to want to serve you. So it's not as if you are enslaving them, but that is just the spirit that God puts in them that you will go and do something for this person. Because there is a power that God puts in false bond that is not pride. People think it's pride, or maybe it's me that I'm thinking it's pride. It's not pride. There's a, there's a particular authority that will always be in you. That is if you don't mess it up. You don't give it out to the devil. You know, a lot of people that are exchanging something for wealth or using somebody for wealth, these are the, these are the divine things that they are collecting from people. When, you, when they say they use one girl for, for rituals or one... Or anything. These are the important things that are collecting. Those things that God deposited in human beings that there's nowhere else you can get it except from God. You understand? So one of it is that authority. When you talk and people want to listen to you, people want to serve you, people want to people want to be your servant. It's not pride. Before I used to think it's pride. It's not pride. It's just that some people cannot go through things that you go through. This thing that I, that I went through, I'm telling you, it's not everybody that can go through it. But before I went through it, I didn't know I can even go through it because I remember those days when people would be like, "Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to report you." I'm going to, you know, I used to be like, ah, "Report me." Now, when people say I want to report you, it doesn't make sense to me anymore because I've passed through it and I saw that I could pass through it and come out without without being destroyed in it. You know? Before, I used to be like, ah, will I be able to go through it? You know, the way they used to put it, they used to put it as if it's, it's so high that if they report you, you are going to, as if it's going to kill you or something. Although it wasn't easy, this one, maybe they did not even, okay, they even reported I remember one of the incidents, they brought police. It was as if, uh, before, the, <laughs> I remember that time when they stole my things. I said, one girl, I said, please let me check your room. Maybe my things are in your house. He said, I will call police now. I said, okay, don't worry. Eventually, when police came, another scene, not with that girl, but another scene when police came, it was as if ground, we, the way they used to call police is coming, as if ground we open and swallow all of them inside the ground when the police... 
Hello, but this came in. It wasn't. It wasn't something bad. It was just so casual. You understand. So what am I trying to put out from there is that there are some things that a lot of people cannot go through. That because of the grace of God on the firstborn, you know, I told you the highest of God is always on the first child. But not on the first child to mess around, not on the first child to misbehave, but on the first child that there will always be a power that will be following you, that you will be giving... What's the English? Giving way where there is no way. Like, you will have that hammer. Imagine, okay, let's take for example now. That womb that you opened, that womb that God gave you the grace to be the first child to open that womb. You know, maybe some of our parents, some of our mothers, they have been searching for, for children for a long time. And then it was you that God gave that grace to open that womb, you know. You can't come by by ordinary power. You must be coming with a particular power that is the power of God. So maybe in your hands, God put a strong hammer there to break, to break chains, to break the the barrier that said this womb will not carry child. And then after that, after you came out, some other children came out. So you you are not coming with with ordinary power. You know, like I always talk about men, about a man should be very, uh, be able to do things, be able to do things. I'm beginning to see that the reason why I talk this way is because I am first child. So I'm thinking, okay, the way I'm behaving, I'm talking that men should behave, it's actually qualities of firstborn. It's not qualities of most men. Though it would be good if we have men that are like that. But these things I always talk about, um, challenging men to do that actually because I still maintain the the grace of God that God puts in firstborn. You understand? And I pray that God will continue to help me to maintain it in Jesus' name. When you don't sin against God, when you don't go about messing around, you will not lose the grace. The grace will always be there. The authority will always be there. The path may be rough. You know, I was thinking uh, I was watching, maybe I was watching video, maybe I was thinking that, look at it today, there are a lot of ways that people are making money. And then people will be looking at you, ah, at your age, you have not even started making the money. But these ways that these people are making the money, they are sinful ways. So, you that you say you are going to stay with the Lord, you will see that it won't be the the easy path. But eventually... With the power of God that God gave you as a firstborn, that you are, you are, uh, what's this English? Consistent, persistent. Yeah, the English is persistent that I will make it in Jesus' name. I will make it in Jesus' name. Eventually, the way we come, it won't be the path that other people are using, but that your path that you faced, the Lord will make a way from nowhere from that path. You understand? And you will not. By the time God finished the work, we will not lose our glory. We will not lose the power of God. We will not lose the authority. We will continue to make ways for people. You know, I said it the, the one time that whenever God lifts anybody up, it's so that the person can relieve the oppressed. Imagine people that, that came to the world without that uh, armor in your hand that God gave you. You are the one that will create path for them. To walk in, you will, there are some people that God God just created them that you will you will be the person that will give them food. It's not everybody that will suffer to to make uh, to create company. It's not everybody. Some people God created them that they will just uh, walk in a particular company. Before I used to think everybody were thinking like me. I used to think everybody have the mind that I try. That they too, they want to have their own company. I didn't know that some people have it in mind that they just want to work for people. I didn't know. Seriously. It's just recently that I'm more matured. That God opened my eyes. That there are some people like that. God, because God didn't give them. There are some people. There are lots of people that don't think the way I'm thinking. And it's not as if they are, they are behind. No, they are not behind. That's just how God created them. If you look at nowadays now. As much as I always... 
say that men should be uh, always wanted to do things right. That's what men that if they, they just want to have a, a girl, a woman that already has all the money and just giving them the money, they don't have the mind that they want to be a creator by themselves. That's what men that don't think like that. They don't have that mind that they want to be a creator. And those are the kind of men that even when they want to choose a wife, they don't want to choose a woman that will push them to to manifest big. They just want somebody that will just stay in the house while they just do the little they can do. Like they are not um, agile. They are not, they are not, you know, like people that are like last born and second to the last born or something like that. Let's say like they are among children of seven now. Like the boy is like the seventh child or the sixth child among seven children. You know, he's not, he doesn't know how to behave like their firstborn. Their firstborn, we, we literally have created path for a lot of them. So even if he's a man, he will not look for a woman that we want him to be acting like the firstborn. He will just look for a woman that uh, we not talk, we not push him to do better, we not uh, increase his, his career or whatever. He doesn't care. You understand because he doesn't have that power before i used to like think everybody was like that but now i understand better so uh, and that is why god is leading me to talk about it that first one the lord also wants you to mess around the lord also wants you to take the sinful part god has given you a power to walk through that dark situation and come out victorious I said before I used to go and say hey, they will report you. I used to ah, I used to think ah, report is it something that is so difficult like that? <laughs> you understand? <laughs> and when when it eventually they didn't even report me, or it's me by myself, I went and meet them. You understand? And it was looking like nothing, nothing. Ah. So what's the video? But why does it look like it's nothing, nothing to me? Because there's a power that is following me that makes way where there's no way. You understand? So that is the reason why God wants every first child. So that you can be able to create path for people coming after. Not just for your siblings alone. Other people from other places. You will also be a source of blessing to everyone, to people. Some people are attached to us. This is what I'm talking about now. That uh, It's like talking about fulfilling our destiny. But recently I'm beginning to see like, it's not everybody that have this mind. And it's not as if they're not going to also be fulfilling their own destinies. But because I'm first child, that is why I have that particular mind. So, there is integrity. God wants first bonds to keep that integrity. The grace to keep that integrity is given unto you. The grace to pass through the fire and not get bonds is given unto you. When you pass through the fire and you come out eventually on the, on the brighter side, you, your siblings are not going to pass through that path anymore. People that go through things and come out victorious. They are the ones that that are creative, have you? Creators. They are the ones that create lives for people. You would think, ah, is it that some people just want to serve some people? Yes. There are some people like that. You know, there was a time that uh, this guy, what's his name? Kiss Daniel. That is security man. Is it security man? They call it a bodyguard. And he said, uh, Kizani added two million to his salary. You understand? And I was just thinking in my mind that, ah, so girl. So some people would prefer that they should just be doing bodyguards for somebody and be collecting money. When you yourself, you can be a creator. But later, God now brought it to my mind that some people are like that. It's not as if, uh, it's not as if that person is using them. No, 
they, they just want to live that kind of life. That is just the life that God made them that they should just come and live on this earth. Some people call it soft life. Yes, when you, you are just working with somebody and you just collect salary, you just that is the limitation you can be. But by the time you are a creator, you, your your glory is unlimited. The, the eyes you can you can get to is unlimited. But today's discussion we are not really discussing about uh, how to go higher or something. Today I'm just trying to let us know that as firstborn, there's a power God has given unto you to make ways. So don't lose that authority. Look at Jesus. Jesus is firstborn. He fulfilled the plan of God for his life. Adam also is also firstborn, but he didn't fulfill it. He messed it up. And God created another means. But in Jesus' case, Jesus was able to, to fulfill. That is how much God wants her firstborn to fulfill for us to fulfill our destinies. God doesn't want us to mess around. There is always the path of of God. And there, that I mean when I say the path of God, that is the original plan of God. Then there's always a second plan. For every firstborn, God wants us to fulfill that original plan of God. There is nobody that God brings to this earth that is without a reason. You see? So if God wants us to pass through something, it means God has to build you. God has to build us before we get to where we are going. This I'm begun I'm getting more matured with all this experiences I passed through. When I was in my twenties, I didn't have all this experience. I didn't know all these things. Imagine I was like, okay, I want to start making money around that time. God forbid, not me. Then maybe that person now go and money is everything. That person now go and do some rituals to make money. You will not have the real plans, the real lessons, the real building. Those things you need that God wants you to know before getting that money. You will not have those lessons. I didn't know anything when I was in my 20s now, especially when I was in young 20s. And that time I was already a graduate. I already graduated from the university. But because I'm 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 at that age and where God is taking me is is very high. You understand? What God wants for me is very high. A small knowledge cannot accumulate it, it cannot fulfill everything. God needed to take me through the lessons. I remember many times I would be like, God, give me money, God, give me money. He said, oh, give me money, he will give me lessons. He will give me how to, you know, how to know people. Now I, I understand a lot of things about people. Now I understand how to even deal with people. Before, if somebody leave me in times of troubles, I will be like, ah. And then come back when everything is fine. I will be like, ah, well, what kind of woman being are you? But now I understand it that. There are some people like that that God has decided that they don't stay with you when you are suffering. But when you are you are enjoying, they come to you so that they can eat f- f- under your table or eat from your table, whichever one you create for them to eat. That is how God created some of us. We are, we are creators. It's not as if they are using us. They are not using us. God didn't create them to create. God created them to just come and and come and hit from where it's already created that's how god created them you understand so most of firstborn let me just put it that way most of firstborn the lesson i want us to just take from today's lesson is that god doesn't want us to use the shortcuts god wants us to be good examples to our younger ones and to people coming behind us and to people that are going to come to our table, when God eventually gives us that table, you know, you will be passing through you will think, hey, which day is it going to end? It will end. Which day am I going to get that glory safe? It will come. You see, 
I remember I have prayed several prayers in the past. We have said, God, I need money. God, send money. God. So we send money. But God took me to that stage this recently that daughter start praying. God lift me up. And when you say God lift me up, that is more than you having your needs be met. That is like you being a creator. You being able to have your own establishment that even you can even serve other people. You understand? But if I didn't go through all those stages, how would I have already prayed this prayer? Imagine I'm in my chest and I'm saying, God lift me up, God lift me up. And then I have that abundant wealth. How will I know how to manage people? When I was younger, anytime somebody said you want to work for me, I, it used to sound strange to me. You understand? I was always afraid of somebody coming to work for me. But now I understand better that some people we have to work for me. It's not as if I'm using them. That is just how God created them. Some people we, we want to collect money for their food from me. Some people we want to eat food that are prepared. It's not that they it's not that I am I am using them or maybe I am I am or they are using me. No. It's because God has made me a creator. And that is what God wants for her first one. God wants us to go through the situation honorably. God wants us to go through it with integrity and come out with the best of the plan of God. And I'm also here again to tell every false one and everybody that God has plans for our lives. Let us go through whatever God wants us to go through with our integrity, with our dignity, with with the plan of God. What English am I trying? With our virtues. Don't lose it. Because these are the things we need we will need at the top. You need authority. When you get what you how you what God has for you. You need authority to speak to people. You need wisdom. You need the accommodating part. You need the creator part. You need, imagine Dan Gote now. Look at a lot of people that are, that are serving him. Is he not one person? Is he not one head that he has? But do you know how much he has, he has gone through to get to that point? And God was able to tell you there is a, a greater power that keeps you at the top. Because I remember the first, the first type of fasting that I fasted, that God used to lift me up from Nigeria to this place to travel abroad, you know. That prayer was just nine, nine days prayer. And I've done that nine days prayer and I'm still, and I'm still waiting on the Lord for miracles. And I'm like, God, but you use this prayer for, for me one time. And God said, because... To stay at the top needs more power than when you want to rise to the top. That is why you would still need more prayers to maintain you at the top. Since you are not going to serve the devil and you need the power of God, so you will, you will need more prayers to stay at the top. Because the forces that will come into you, some people are, as, are weak, their energy can easily drain you. God forbid that somebody should drain from the top down, you know. But by the time you already have enough power, enough balloon, enough enough energy, enough hair to stay at the top, they can't pull you down. They will not be able to pull us down. Imagine the, the, the weight that the, the aeroplane carries to the top. If it's not fully energized to stay at the top, it can easily crash down. You understand? So those are the things. So please, today again, I'm encouraging us that God's height is on us. We are for the Lord. And I also want to say that you also, you can learn from it, even if you are not firstborn. Because there are some homes that the firstborn have messed up. So if, if you, you also, you are, you are, you, you want to say, God, I also, I want to dedicate myself to you. Like the Levites, how they eventually dedicated themselves to God. When Rebel messed up, they, they say we we, we, we we are on the lost side. So you too, you can also dedicate yourself to God and say, I will stay on the right path. I will not mess up. I will not do things wrong. And then watch how God will return you to a creator that people will come to serve you. People will come to bless you and, and, and also will be a blessing to others. May God help us.
and the name of Jesus. Yeah, that's that's all for tonight. So by God's grace, tomorrow will be here. Maybe by tomorrow, God will allow me to do the topic I talked about yesterday about men. So maybe it's tomorrow that we are going to do it. But I'm grateful to God for for the progress. May God's name be praised. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the word of God that has gone us tonight. I was really shaking and like, God, what am I saying? But I know that the power of God has gone out and it will do what you have sent it out to do in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, come and refill me up with the Holy Spirit. And I pray that the power of God has gone out in this world will speak to people and it will make people to turn to the Lord in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for our prayers. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you. Bye. Ah. <sighs>